We're going again. Yep. We're going again. But don't talk about sports this time. And again and again. Because clearly we talk about sports way too much. Our, our, our conversations are about like 90% sports. No, no, no. I take that back. No, I don't even 90, but there, there's... It's like 60%... It's like 30% sports talk, but like 40% sports memes, yeah. which really like puts yeah. it over. Especially in season. <laughs> Especially in season, it spikes like 70%. Sports memes are the best. Yep. Only second to meme memes. Back at it again. <laughs> like we never left. Coke and Dank. Dank and Coke. It's the Lethal Weapon. Hey, Dank! Oh, sports. Hey, Coke. <laughs> I got the sports update. What's the difference between a tuna and a piano? You always have to say, what's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference? You can tune a piano, but you can't piano a tuna. <laughs> You're an idiot. You had a second take, had a list of other jokes, and you still went with the original joke. Yeah, we said we were going to do that. No, you said you were the list. <laughs> I'm not. My You're, phone's blank now. Honestly, you got a better laugh at this, and I, I know. knew the punchline coming. That's why I'm keeping coming, it. So, That's why know. I'm keeping it. Anyway, let's those, hear the segue from tuning up a piano. Well, though, for those who don't know, we did this one take already, and it was crap. That's why he's laughing like... No, no. <laughs> so we, did a, was... we, we did a first take, but we talked like seven minutes of sports yeah. to the point it's like, anyone listening be like, oh, I picked the wrong... So I told him I was going to use a new joke, and I didn't. Yeah. He said, he said, baby. And, and he I got, got a laugh. better laugh. But he got, it wasn't an honest laugh, okay? It, it was, was a fucking honest it laugh. It was a cheated laugh. I'm laughing at you use the same material. I don't yeah. have the punchline. Whatever. It still works. The, I want to hear your segue from tuning a piano uh-huh. to across the pages. It's not to that. It's a comparison. <laughs> your confidence. In the, it's, not, it's not to that. You're, you're it's the so comparison between a tuna and a piano. Yes. It's a sorry. <laughs> don't, we, don't, don't even nope, tell him. I won't tell him what we have on. Um, it's the it's the confidence of tuna and a piano are nothing alike. These two shows are something alike, but not nearly as good as one another. That's that's what you're. Fuck! Going I can't watch while I'm doing. You can't. Don't but don't blame that. That was a terrible segue. It wasn't even uh, close. You, no, you, but I was, my my whole point was that these one of these shows is one of these things is good. The other one's not as great. Between tuna and piano, <laughs> which is not great and which is? Tuna is not great. Piano is cool. Fuck you. Fans, wanna, of, I, fans of tuna, get them. Yeah, please. Tuna's delicious. It's tuna or salmon? Tuna. Ew. You're Sa- fucked. Salmon's amazing. You're fucked. I, listen, if you're asking me canned fish, I'm uh-huh. picking tuna over salmon. If you're putting a slab of fish in front I'm of me. I'm putting a slab of, I'm putting a, there's. Tuna's never an option unless I'm getting sushi. Tuna or crabs? Like your crab? No, not, no, not my crabs. <laughs> well, you didn't say crab. God damn, we're getting off topic again. Now we're Are talking we? about seafood. <laughs> I, I, can, I, can, I can definitely segue crabs to one of these properties because something was very much like an STD. And very I scra- crabby? I, scra- I scratched a lot. Um, okay. Maybe maybe that was a good segue. <laughs> anyway, I don't I don't feel that your tuna is, your piano is better than tuna. No, so we're doing another episode you, of Across. You can't survive off piano. God damn it. You can can't we... survive off piano. No, but can we get into what we're fucking talking about? If you were on You a, can tune a piano. You can. If you're on a desert you can't island. Yeah, piano tuna. And all there was was an abundance of pianos uh-huh. and an abundance of tuna. How are you going to live? Off the t- off the pianos? Off playing chopsticks? Fuck you. Um I'm, I'm not even listening. <laughs> is, is, are we going to use this one too? Is this, is this yeah, we're using this. Right, I'm fine. keeping this. Yeah, let them Fuck know. You. Let them know about tuna. Big tuna here. Big t- That's good. Big tuna. That's a good one. No one calls them big pianist. Would you rather be a... <laughs> Called big piano. Would you rather be a pianist or a tromboner? Tromboner. See? Smart. I'm not on the piano. Would you rather be... Again. Would you rather be... Would you rather be... Would you rather be a tuna mover or a piano mover? Would you rather be a soft cheese or a new meat? <laughs> That's what you listeners have to think about. Would you rather be a soft cheese? <laughs> Look at the guy's face. 
That's <laughs> miserable. He's he's thinking of the, the question. Yeah, yeah. How, yeah he is. Would I be a soft cheese or a new meat? Soft cheese or new meat? That's not even a good segue. But thank you for plugging soft cheese and new meats. We're doing across the pages, and it's a good one. Yep, that's where we compare uh, two properties across comic books and TV shows. I'm gonna say movies. the pages would be like you fuck. No, I close my eyes for that one because. <laughs> I'm so across easily the pages distracted. Where we uh, uh, look across the pages yeah, no, <laughs> of two no, no. things. No, so we're doing Doom Patrol and Umbrella Academy. Um, we we both watched both series, first seasons. Yeah, in the bag. In the bag, and you read Umbrella Academy, and I read. I did an arc of Doom Patrol. Hotel Suite. I read. I wrote Crawling from the Wreckage by Grant Morrison. I should be pulling up some stats here. Ill prepared, but yes. Where are we going first? We're going. Start with umbrella. Yes, we should. Start Let's with start with umbrella. umbrella. Uh, so what, did we talk about the TV show. Yeah, we talked yeah. about the TV show. Um, interesting. Let's start there. Good, good I, on Netflix. Way so, to take a chance. Yeah, way to take a chance. Um, I uh, I think there was something really good there. Yes, they have. Let's let's go into casting because that's easy to not mess up. Um, so. <laughs> Let's go into a... Uh, okay, so for number five, it's interesting the way that the characters are named. Um, the whole premise is uh, on one specific day in time, all these children were born, and all of them, for whatever reason, had special powers, and this one kind of crazy scientist, professor, madman... Decided, he knew this. I'm going to go around and pick up all these babies. Adopt so, them, yeah. Which is kind of... A, it's weird, but I'm, I'm okay. It's a comic book. I'm into it. Let's fair try enough, it. Yeah, it's Let's do it. Comic book, so, Let's do it. But obviously your mind is bending on how does he get to adopt all these random people. Anyway, uh, number five is Adian uh, Gallagher, Ellen Page, who is number seven, I believe. Yep. Uh, Vanessa Hargraves, uh, Tom Hopper, Luther Har- Hargraves. Uh, Hargreaves. Hargreaves all, yeah. number, number one. I can't say Hargreaves. <laughs> They're all the same last name. So, yeah. uh, Daniel. <laughs> you can just say the first name. David Castaneda plays Diego Hargreaves. Um, Ale- <laughs> Emmy Raven Lampam. Lampman plays Allison Hargreaves. Hargraves. Har- Hargreaves. Uh, Lampman. That's a pretty cool last name. It is. Uh, <laughs> I didn't uh, realize Ra- that. <laughs> Lampman. She got a bad in school. Uh, Robert Chiam plays Klaus Hargreaves. Uh, Mary J. Blige plays Cha-Cha. Cameron Bristone plays uh, Hazel, so on and so forth. I'm already falling asleep reading all the names. There's more people here. There's more people um, there. But then they all had numbers associated to them because on when they were on their upbringing, their their father figure was pretty um, cold. Yeah. Where he would didn't give them really names. They were just. I, I'm not doing it justice because the narrator is pretty actually good in this, and it's Colin uh, Fury. He plays Sir Reginald Hodgreaves, and you only really hear about him. You never actually get to see him, yeah. which is a cool effect in that. Yeah. Um, Shelly McCarthy plays Agnes, who's a waitress in the... She has some nice kind of scenes. Ben Hardgrave is played by Justin M. Min. Um, Grace, nobody cared about that. <laughs> Not really. John uh, Magaro played uh, uh, Leonard Peabody. He has a pivotal role in this as well. If you don't know already, spoilers. Um, so it's cool, because it, essentially it starts off with... You get thrown right into the action of just seeing these kids assembled, and they're dressed in uh, these kind of... Uniforms, like yeah, uh, like, schoolboy yeah, and girl yeah. uniforms, private, right? Private yeah, private school, school. That's what I'm looking for. And then they have these cool little masks, and I like how they kind of yeah, kept little that Robin masks, book, <laughs> the comic book uh, thing with it, so you can't see their their pupils or their eyelids. They yeah. actually whitened it out, so it gives you that kind of look. And they they have to go like stop a bank being robbed. I think that's the first one that yeah. Kind of, and you get a feel for like each of them has an individual power, and for whatever reason, their father or father figure decided you guys are gonna be heroes. We're gonna make sure that everyone knows you as what's their the umbrella academy yeah fucking name the umbrella academy <laughs> but, but, what's but, the name again but that's the, that's already that was the weird choice of the show and I, I initially liked it but then once we start comparing it you understand why it's missing something yeah. there's no actual intro to the show they find a way in each episode to flashback that but add in the actual title of umbrella academy it usually appears on an object or yeah in a, yeah yeah but there's no break the intro yeah to let you know that there's an intro and usually an intro is the best way for a casual viewer or a first time viewer to kind of understand what your show's about. Yeah. They decided we're not going to give that to you. And for something that's so weird and kind of avant-garde, they could have done a lot with a uh, intro to the show as opposed could to have. just throwing us. I kind of liked how they did it though. I thought it was all right. And there's no like theme song or anything. But Again, still after, once we started comparing and contrast, this is something that kind of stuck yep. out to me. So the, the show throws you directly into the action and you don't 
really know where you're lending until I mean the voiceover is great because it gives you all the narration of what's happening. Yeah. But you don't really know what's happening until kind of you see number five, who is the pivotal kind of protagonist to move the plot along. Yep. Um he's the he's the one that his power set is he can kind of time jump. Yeah. I uh didn't really like him. <laughs> like the, but I thought he was casted yeah. perfectly. You like him? He's, yeah, he was a little I don't snot. like him, yeah. no, but he's yeah. a, he's annoying and smart. I was like, I yeah. I would love someone to punch him in the face. Yeah. And he played that to a T. Yeah, because he's like he's he traveled so far into the future that he's actually like fifty something years old, but he's in the body of like a twelve year old yeah, or whatever. Not even like a not 10 even year yeah, old, yeah ten year old. But he has all the knowledge and and oh, he retains like a everything. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Like everything like fifty learned. something year old. So he, he actually has the best kind of story arc and like the life that he got. They to focus live. on him a lot too because he's he's kind of the. I think he's the protagonist, and it's hard to yeah. put one down in this. Yeah, show. I think so. Well, they they try really hard. To now, I don't know how this compares to the book because you, I didn't read it, but you yeah. did. Um, I don't know. They, they, I don't know if they tried really hard to make every character really edgy and right. different. Like, so I don't know. It, it kind of came across a little forceful. I don't know how true to the comic that is, though. Well, it's we. I don't know if we, when do we. At what point do we start comparing to the comic? Ah, you can just do it anytime, really. Um, I like the comic book because it reads real fast and it's very dynamic and interesting. Um. Like each the way it's drawn really yeah. lends itself to the story because everyone's kind of angular and sharp. Yeah. So the the action moves along like that. But in terms of like the plot, you get thrown into it. It's exactly the same. Like the same thing. So so basically, so we didn't say this. I know we don't we don't need to talk too much about the show. I'd rather focus on the books more for this. But uh, the main idea is that the the father, quote unquote father, father figure grouped all these kids together so that they would eventually stop the apocalypse that was he never told them that though but it was it was like rigorous training and he was a jerk to them constantly so that well that's the theme like this, yeah this father figure was constantly telling them one thing while not preparing them for yeah the yeah. thing like he yeah. was, he was, he was a dick he was like yeah it was like a just purposeful dick and well, it was unnecessary but again comic logic the fact that he can just go around and start adopting kids and decide like, yeah oh, yeah they're my children yeah. i'm gonna like you have to sign some forms and like meet with some people before you sign them up to be vigilantes in the street yeah so like that's already in whatever's anyone has a parental mind like how does this old dude get all these young kids running around but in terms of the comic it lends itself to like how quick paced it's moving mm -hmm. but there are like story arcs that happen so fast in the comic that there's no time for you to understand why it's happening so is that there one so is it are all the sub story arcs about all the different like do they all get their time to to shine the kids no but you get a feel of who they are once they meet up again once they're adults so okay. there's obviously a time jump which i don't know if we explained in the tv series no you get a nice little piece from when they're kids yeah they're all same like the same uh, as in the comic book of where they started and where they are now. And because number five is the catalyst who yeah. kind of brings them back. And the, his death. So we didn't even talk about that too. The reason that all the kids have to come back to where they started with him is because he mysteriously died. So a lot of them have different um, motivations on how he died, why he died, or if they even care that he died. Um, which is great because that helps lend them... That gives you an idea of which who... which how each character is and who they are in this family dynamic. So, like, Space Boy and uh, Diego. Space Boy. <laughs> nice. Luther. Luther, Luther, yeah. Luther and uh, Diego often butt heads. They're the, I guess, Wolverine and Cyclops of, yeah, this, seems like it, doesn't of it? this team. Yeah, seems like it, doesn't And it works really well because one is very much a cynic and doesn't believe anything because he's learned to realize everything that he thought was true was a lie which is diego knife dude yeah and space boy is just the adamant this is what our father wanted this is the this is the mission i need to do this is the boy scout i'm going to do it for him and comes back and like there has to be something wrong here we have to find out the real truth yeah and that's the the scott summers kind of ideology behind that so like their dynamic while not really fleshed out in the comic book you get there are other dynamics like allison and space boy Rumor, who her special power is. So I guess Diego's special power is like he's really good with knives. Well, he, he throws can, he knives can throw and, he and he can, can direct them. Yeah, yeah he, he basically throws out like knives and he can turn them in midair. Right. Allison and Rumor, her power is she has the power of persuasion. She can basically whisper in your ear and whatever she says, you're probably going to do. Yeah, I heard a rumor that 
Which is great. Well, it's not, it's not I heard a rumor that you shit your pants, so, and then bam, you shit your pants. You shit your pants. In, <laughs> and in the in the comic book, that can be so powerful, dude. Again, in Fuck. in the TV show, they give her they give you time to understand how she's taking that, where she's taking that. Like yeah. you understand, that she has a family now, a daughter. Why she's successful? She stopped, she's like a celebrity. Yes. Why she stopped using her powers? Why she's afraid to use them again? And what's going on with her and Space Boy? In the comic book, there's one page where they're off on the roof talking about like oh it's weird being back together and then she says she whispers in her head i heard you want to kiss me and then they kiss it's like <laughs> damn yeah, there's I, like a weird romance if, in them that if threw i me if i read it. the yeah. book before i watched the tv series i'd be like where what? did this come from yeah right in the tv show they they let that play out a yeah little bit. blossoms you, yeah you, you can see that happening it's like okay that's the cw effect right like they 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 saw that there was a romance there so they gave it time to unfold i always used like smallville because smallville was the first type of we're going to do superheroes, but we're going to do it for, like, teenagers. So, all the romance we're definitely going to play out. Did you watch all seasons of that? All seven? It was seven seasons, right? I, I missed out on, like, a couple in the middle. Like, when uh, he became the Blur. And oh, they had a yeah, watchtower. I didn't watch any of it. So. But then I clicked back in when uh, they had John Jones show up. And, uh, but Lana left. Then Lana became evil. and like Spoilers for Smallville. <laughs> spoilers for everything. If you're we always spoil. I, just want, I like saying that because... It's I don't fun. know. I feel it sound like a but, prick. But I enjoyed it because it was the first of its kind. Yeah. So, yeah. like, seeing that uh, method being applied to other properties in comic books makes sense, right? Like, you have to give them, you have to give people something to love. And, yeah, for sure. Uh, follow through. So, they, I think they wanted to make Space Boy and Allison somewhat of a protagonist. But, so that's my initial problem with this, this story. They didn't give... I wanted them to give each character their own episode so you can kind of understand where they're yeah. coming from. And they tried to do that, but I don't kind think of. they did it as successfully as they could have done it. When, um, do you know when the book was written? I was trying to pull up all those stats, but okay. they clearly we're not prepared. Sorry um, to throw that on you. Um, I, I, I'm just going to talk about Klaus. Cause I, yeah, that's about so, yeah he, was, he was actually my favorite character. Correct. That's my yeah. favorite casting. Um, uh, let's throw up his name again because I probably butchered it the first time. So let's butcher no, it again the second was, Oh, time. you mean the actor? Robert name. Sheehan? Yeah, I like casting. And I didn't like casting a, uh, with every character in the show, but his was great. And his power set is he can basically he can see dead people and... In the comic book, he can kind of use that to levitate and kind of... He's all like the spooky ghoul powers yeah. and stuff. he talks like. to ghosts. And he can now... And the ghosts can talk through him. So he can kind yep. of transmute that. So in the book, it's not played up as how kind of screws loose he is. Like he's just... He has one-liners, but everyone's kind of desensitized to it. In the show, his one-liners hit. And you can tell how yeah. much of an oddball he feels. Yeah. And they gave him a show and a half, I feel, to like... Uh, unpack how yeah because he starts out as a bit of a punk and kind of becomes a uh, very important part of yeah, he's the plot in, going he's forward integral, right he's integral yeah. and the fact that like his father kind of uh, pulled that power out of him by locking yeah. him in the crypt when he was like 12 yeah it was weird just fucked him up so he's constantly high on whatever drugs to either numb himself or numb hearing all the voices yeah which is like a real thing like uh, I've, I have friends or I've known people that are like mediums and they're like, yo, voices never stop. Like, there's constantly someone always around. So if that was your power, and you could constantly be hearing people, and I'm sure you've seen movies where people get, can talk to the other side, yeah, and they never shut up. Like, <laughs> the fact that I, I'd probably be in the same boat. Like, I would dosing up with as much heroin as possible to just leave me the fuck alone. Like, I'm tired of hearing voices and thinking I'm crazy. I liked him. I think he did great. He was good. Role. Yeah, uh, and he was constantly drugged up or drunk. To until, block out the voices, right? And until then, his art came, and he's like, "Yeah, I need to kind of sober up." He got clarity, and it. He's, can... he's the only one that can talk to their other brother, um, number five. I'm gonna say six. I'm just gonna throw in a number here. Justin H M, who plays Ben Hargrave. Yep. Hargrave, Hargreaves, Har. It doesn't matter. Ben. Um, he's the only <laughs> one that can talk to him. Who has a fucking ridiculous cool power too? Like he can just pull like monsters out of his. I guess. Well, chest. he was like the yeah, he was like the, the he had he like an like octopus. Yeah, like he had something like this giant kraken like... type thing living inside. But of him he like... died, and they don't really go into death. They don't say how in the comic book or oh. in the. Oh, they don't show. say either way. No, I think it's something that you can unpack later on, which is fine. And in terms of the comic book, again, a lot of things were just flying through, so mm -hmm. I liked it. It was a it's six issues is a very easy read. Yeah, and you can buy into it. So. So I know what she says at the beginning, but it's. Uh... Published by Dark Horse um, in 2007, written by Gerard Way, who you might know from uh, My Chemical Romance, and it was the show was filmed actually in Toronto and Hamilton. That Canada. I did, I did yeah. know that. Um, I didn't know it was filmed here. 
Well, yeah, like that house looks familiar too. Um, but you see some of the. I think so. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't realize it was filmed here. They, they have a nice, <laughs> they have a nice Professor X mansion that they all live in and everything. Yeah. Um. There's some left field weird things like there's a talking monkey, which is kind of cool. Their mother is kind of a robot. Oh yeah, Mr. Pogo. Yeah, they know. Yeah. Um, I, I, at first glance, I thought it was more of like an X Men ripoff. Right. But their power sets are so weird like right. they all have really weird power sets i'm like oh, okay he's they're really they're really trying hard not to be an not x-men, X-Men. ripoff yeah and i don't think that i didn't get the comparison to x-men until no after reading the no. book and i was like this is anything is more like new mutants yeah, yeah this is not it's very, not x-men very, like, oh this works uh <laughs> it's very my team just limited scored. <laughs> yes um, but it, it's weird and that but is it trying to be weird or do you think the weird works here in the comic, it works for okay. Because so it's the not show, try, it's not trying to be anything. That's yeah, not, the show seems like it felt trying, like it was trying a little hard. So yeah, hard to like fit into some sort of wheelhouse, and then it wants you to care about characters that you don't care. Like Ellen Page plays uh, whatever Hardgrave, and I didn't like her casting. I didn't. No, I didn't like her either. either. She, Allison was okay. I didn't mind her. Space Boy was. Cool, I like them all. But I wanted to punch him in the face. Yeah, yeah. like they're. He's a bit... And Vanya, and it should be said that in the book they're they're not they're basically all the same race. They're not really they're all painted. I guess white would be they're all pink. They're not even pink. They're oh, they're white, white right? Okay. But like because of the style set, like they're all kind of translucent. Not even translucent. It just works for how it is. In the TV show, I think they specifically went for diversity. Hires. Yeah, which is good. That's, that's I, fine. I, I think it takes away from it you a think little so? bit okay. um, it, it definitely eases the blow when your sister starts making out with your brother space yeah <laughs> so that weird the, well, the weird thing the, same the race, fucked up maybe? thing for me is that they the whole show they're talking about how much their siblings and their family and stuff mm-hmm. and the next thing you know they these two have a romance i'm like this is a little weird i know they're not blood at all right. but it's like you guys have been talking about Right, they still talk about dad and right. mom, like like it's like the same dad one. And, mom. Yeah. and they gave that like two and a half episodes for them yeah. to yeah. Uh, evolve. Here's who I really didn't like. It was uh so Space Boy or not Space Boy, sorry, uh, number five, not uh, yeah, number five. Because yeah. he's protagonist. He's been jumping through time, and clearly you can't. He's do trying that. to fix things. That he's like the bishop. <laughs> So we're gonna compare it to X Men. Clearly, everyone has a yeah. I already said uh, Scott and uh, Logan. Yeah. Um, he comes back. Figuring like, oh crap, I've seen the end of the world, something needs to change. But before he does that, he kind of figures out that there's kind of this back door where there's a world operating of people trying to keep time in order. Which, this is fucking cool. Yeah, this is Which really makes cool. sense. This, this is in the book too? Yes, but not to this extent. They didn't, okay. They didn't it's, go... it's interesting that the the show is actually fleshing out more than the book did. But it doesn't... Well, the first, there's three other novelizations. There's, novelizations. there's, three there's two version... other volumes, right? Yeah. There's three, oh, there's like a Dallas and then there's another sweet like they, they call them sweets which is cool okay. um but the weird thing is the show decides only specific things to flesh out okay um, fair enough so cha-cha and hazel are the two kind of time i like police. them the time the time police i like them. i like mary j blige in the role i didn't like cameron Britton. yeah i'm the opposite <laughs> fair enough so, again, <laughs> which is again, weird yeah you, you, not really you could just the show is kind of Hit or miss, episode by episode, and kind of the way that they put everything together. Yeah, I think I, they gave it enough time. To here's here's the funny. I'll be I'll be on. I'll be completely honest with you. I only watched this show into its entirety for this yeah. episode. Really, I didn't like. I was a couple episodes in. I was like, eh, not really for me. But um, it actually does start getting good in the in near the end. I was kind of like, oh, I'm I'm the invested final, in this. I think yeah. the final episode is their best episode. For me, the best stuff is when they weren't a family when they were letting me understand who each character yeah was. that was more interesting than the beginning the like, first i love episodes, diego because yeah. diego's backstory is like he obviously this didn't work out him being a crime fighter so he became a cop but yeah. he became kind of a, a rough cop yeah. and then he had a personal relationship and it didn't work out so yeah. like you get all of that you get why he typically likes to do things on his own he can have a partner yeah. so when he gets back to the family like that's all shit i eat up right but when he gets in the family there's a lot of What's the what's the word where there's a lot of deus machina ex yeah, machina kind yeah, of shit in there? Machina, it's like, yeah. oh, we're all here because we all have and to be here, it. and then it's over. So, I, essentially, the whole premise is number five is traveling back through time to figure out that the apocalypse is happening not because of some crazy instance; it's because their sister, number seven, is the the reason for it. Yeah, Vanya, and when she uh, what what threw me was when she uh, sliced Allison's throat. Yeah, I was like, oh. Which is in Fuck. the comic, Don't... and it's amazing in the comic. Sick. One thing that – so that that was sick about the show. The, the thing I didn't – I liked the least about the whole show was that the, everything was a secret. It was like – Yeah. There's, there's like secrets 
everywhere. Okay. Every character's a secret. This is a secret. That's a secret. Her new boyfriend's a secret. Who is saw coming a fucking mile away. Yeah. So Vanya gets the, the boyfriend who um, this guy kind of seduces or charms her. Sorry, yeah. charms her because she's been alone her whole life. And you know this guy's got well, ulterior like, motives right her, from. Her, her, and you also know that so it's presented that Vanya's the only one without, elevated, powers. without yes. powers. I'm like, the very first episode I'm watching it, I'm going. I go, yeah, oh, she's, she's gonna have, she's, she's gonna be the, the, the most powerful. Yeah, she's gonna be the most powerful out of all. Them. Like she's a super mutant. The fact that she had no powers was like, okay, well, you yeah, guys are something <laughs> special about it. Yeah, and the fact that Dumb. the father figure is so like he doesn't even treat that in the way that at least allows her to like feel like a yeah like a a, a little girl and like a love daughter. He constantly pushes her out of like pictures and like yeah. you you have no power like demeans her. You're and, like, asking for this to fucking her, blow up like, in your face. Build a build a like a. a a bomb shelter for her when she inevitably becomes too strong but like yeah. at some point you're supposed to have real conversations with your kids yeah. if you had a conversation like hey man yeah. Yeah. you're kind of <laughs> scary so we're taking steps to make sure you don't become the end of the world yeah. probably would have been a different outcome for uh, a it's, it's yeah all you can do is talk to the kids the Just father's a douchebag like four of the five kids are douchebags yeah. the, the, the time cops are douchebags yeah. like, who do you cheer for yeah, hey, the monkey. It's and hard, they, they and then the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in the comic, they do the it monkey. in such a great panel. Like, um, his head gets blown out. Like, he's a, he's and, a chimpanzee. Fair enough. His, you see his brain splatter out, and because of Vanya, oh, really? Vanya just fucks it up. Like oh, when yeah, she becomes gangs, white yeah. violin in the comic, it's so fucking awesome. And it's because of a villain that I don't remember his name, but he's like a, a orchestra Herald conducting or vampire. Oh, he's a vampire in the book? Yes. Oh, he's not a vampire in the it's, show. It's he's not, just a it's sleaze not the same, ball. It's not the same dude. It's, oh, it's like there's, okay. Uh, there's a, they have robots in it. There's vampires. Oh, so there's it, sounds, it sounds way better. Yeah. The, <laughs> again, the comic book reads like a fun comic book. They yeah. just don't have time to kind of unpack everything, yeah. which a TV show does. And obviously, you have to change things for a TV show because you don't want to pick up everything. You want yeah, to make you kind of want to make a little. So the way that she becomes white violin is through a dude that finds the book that her father... The diary of the book her father left that got thrown out accidentally because yeah. Klaus used that money uh, at a pawn shop to go get money for drugs. Fairly simple. Yeah. A lot of, but a lot of ex machina. If he wasn't walking past that dumpster, he wouldn't have found this book and decided. Because he's also backstory on him. His secret is he's been an obsessed fan since he was a kid. Yeah. He dressed up like the Umbrella Academy. He built that little. Yeah. He built a Robin's mask, and he's been following them to the point now that he's like, "Oh, I can bang one of them," and then yeah, and I he guess just takes full advantage. And, and, but you can see it coming a mile away. It's like, okay, yeah, this guy's a lot of things happen obviously for the, the way they they need things to happen in a specific time. They don't give it enough. So like when we say the TV show unpacks it, they only unpack specific things, but don't unpack the right things. So right. I would have spent more like this. For me, this show would have been five episodes of just the kids and the father. Yeah. So we understand all in the, their in different the past. dynamics. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't have found out they're adults until like episode six. Like the time jump, like it. Right? So just so you yeah. you grow to love the kids for who they are when they're kids. And then when you see that they're douchebag adults, you feel for them more because you're like, oh, I remember when you were a kid. But you never had a chance with your father. Yeah. And you're constantly hearing the voiceover of the father. Like, great voice. Like, I love the voice actor. Yeah, he was good. He was actually really good for that, yeah. And great narrator for, like, progressing the story. Because he's always talking to either the audience or each individual. Yeah. Like, he what? has little moments with each child. And he's like, this is what you need to do. But a super dick. Like, he literally, after his his golden boy, space boy, gets kind of fucked up on a mission where he didn't have enough coverage. But he sent him in anyway. He has no choice but to save his life using monkey parts and kind of yeah. basically turns him into half man, half monkey. He's like King Kong with a small head. And then once he saves his son, his son's still loyal to him. He's like, yo, man, I'm ready to go back in the field. His dad's like, nah, I'm going to send you into space. Moon. And yeah, you're you're, you're going to do moon. a moon mission from now on. Send me back rocks. So he does that. And then the mission that he thinks he's doing, his he sends back to his father. Like there's, an, there's a, a moment in the episode where Space Boy comes back and he sees all the packets that he's been sending. Uh, his father that have he just left under the the floorboards yeah like just yeah he just, just like, stashed like, them like what's the, what was the point of all that like what are you what are you trying to prove and he's a big monkey now like you can't have me do that if you want me to keep talking that's not really oh sorry I'm pointing, I'm pointing to you. you're trying to distract me as I'm giving you time to look at something that you want to look at that's so now I'm gonna sick. look while you talk. Yeah, no. What actually, it's funny. You, I know you said the last episode is your favorite, but what was funny is you know what she's doing her violent thing, right? 
and they just kept doing the same thing over and over. Yeah, they, <laughs> like, they kept jumping at her. They and it was like, brown. Like, okay, maybe we jump at her a second time. She won't do the fucking learn this supernova time. move. Boom, okay. Well, let's do it a third time. <laughs> and so here's what I really found interesting. Um, when number five goes to the past and talks to, like, the head timekeeper. Yeah. Like, the how stylized it is because, like... Yeah, it was seems, cool. It's like the 50s, it, It's right? like a 1950s, yeah. like, it's all operators and stuff. I'd love to spend more time in that world. That'd be cool, to see yeah. see what's actually going... Like, it's... There should be a the whole camera. episode just that. Yeah. They, and that's that's the problem with the show. They yeah. never gave enough time for one character to breathe in whatever world that they're in. Because they all lived separate worlds and never had to get back together. But they had to keep rushing to get them to the apocalypse and to get a get, uh, fucking white violin... Go. Which they never call her in the show. No, they don't. That's a cool name. It is. And her, <laughs> I like her, that white and her violin. Comic costume is ten times better than the white suit that Ellen Page put on. Yeah, it was just like a little. That's what I was saying. If I if I recasted that Ellen Page, I would recast as uh, Michelle Trachtenberg. Yeah, Tra- uh, Trachtenberg. Trachtenberg. Yeah, I know you're talking about. You'll yeah. know her from Euro Trip fame. If not, you really know her from Harriet the Spy. Um, She's from Buffy too, isn't she? Yeah, she is from Buffy. Boom. So she she's done a lot of good things, but she has the like soft look to her yeah and then i've seen her play like kind of demure and strong yeah and that's pretty good Hel- yeah helen think... page is like dead in the eyes no offense to helen page like, <sighs> she was i don't know she's, a, she's always juno she's she, but yeah. she's a good actor but she's great at juno things i feel like part of this she phoned in though like i don't know it seems, or she just was kind of like ah. she's it, it seems like she was playing uh kitty pride again <laughs> yeah, kind of, yeah. Like, i can skate <laughs> and just running through walls it's yeah like, I don't know if anyone really knew what they were doing other than Space Boy, who had to be yeah, a, he was pretty, yeah. a giant suit. Like, oh, yeah. I'm going to have a monkey? All yeah. right, I got All right it. cool. Monkey Man. Uh, so, that's that. Let's move on to Doom Patrol. Do it. Um, read the... I, I recommend reading the comic. Well, we can come back to that. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, read, the, read the comic. Because yeah. I have to say something I actually will read this. it now. There's, there's, in, there's interesting things here. I just don't think it was fleshed out. Because ultimately, the show's not terrible, but it's. Uh, I'm not watching it next There's season. better things on. I I'm not watching it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly there, it. Yeah. And talking about it. Talking about it. There's your segue. Doom Patrol. Give it. Um, give it. Get him. Holy shit. DC's best? TV DC's show? best, yeah. Uh... <laughs> I mean, unless you like the... Unless you like the CW I do. Stuff. I already talked about how much I like Smallville. Um, I fucking love this show. You I love loved Arrow. it. You I love Flash. I loved the first season of Arrow. I loved it. Yeah, it's probably the best stuff going on. This stuff is amazing. And That's they, not animated. They took very little changes from the comic book. They just kind of were like... They, they kind of built their own team here, mm-hmm. but... To their credit. I mean, all members of Doom Patrol, but they kind of formed their own... Uh, roster. Roster yeah. of the... Yep. Many rosters, right? Yep. And it's great. Uh, you want to do the casting? I, I know you like to do the casting. Who wants to hear me butcher some more names? You can't get butcher Robot Man. Uh, well, well, when we get there, All right. we get that. Uh, Diane Guerrero, a Crazy Jane, Driver 8, Karen. It's great. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Uh, April <laughs> Boba. <laughs> Boba. Bulbasaur? Boba. Oh. Elastigirl, Rita Farah. Adam Tudyk, uh, Eric Morden, Mr. Nobody. Matt Bonner plays uh, Larry Trainer. Slash Negative Man, Brendan Fraser, Cliff Steele, Robot Man, Timothy Dalton, Chief, Niles Calder, uh, Ryle, Riley Shanahan actually plays the moving around uh, Robot Man. Okay. Uh, Mathic Zook plays the moving around actual Negative Man. Because we get more voices yep. from Brendan yep. and Matt Bomber. Uh, yeah. Uh, Jovin Wade plays Cyborg, Victor Stone. Uh, Phil Morris, who was also in Smallville, um, plays Silas Stone. And... That's about it. Well, I gotta you get got the cockroach. Hold on, let me find his name. <laughs> I gotta get the cockroach. Don't let me forget the cockroach. Curtis Armstrong as Ezekiel the cockroach. Um, dare I say perfect casting? I would not change. I one wouldn't change a thing. On this. So one we talk list. about, and that um, never happens really. No, especially in comic book movies. There's always one person who's like, you know, this one. You know what's funny is we Pitch. were we were just talking about hey in Umbrella Academy we had to like struggle to like certain characters yeah. in this one I like everybody off the bat I like him everybody yeah oh, Elastigirl girl took a little bit of warming up but still I she I, looks great so she looks great sense. and she's a great act she, she yeah, is great she's but she, really she, earned, good in this. she earns your respect she's really good in this and your admiration and you get the backstory and to their credit they gave each yes, here we character go. I kept wanting to say this their own episode and it worked great. It was wonderful. Actually, they give each character an episode and a half because yeah. they would come back to the group yep. or their counterpart with yeah. their baggage and then share it with that other person who's coming off their baggage. Yeah. 
and you would see shared baggage and then yeah. learning from oh amazing to be fair this is five episodes longer than umbrella academy academy good first move so yeah that's 15 episodes whereas academy is only 10, 10. so they had a bit more wiggle room to do what they need to do but it's just a better show overall like it's i don't know where to start that's, I, that's that goes down to writing though you can get everything you need to get done in 10 episodes if you want to because yep. they had some filler episodes you're, you're, you're right this, you're right but they decided to take their time because the and it was it was a, a slow burn, but they had things to do every episode, and it's just so weird too. If you've never read Doom Patrol, I would almost say that you'd be scared away, except that the characters are so charming that they sh- they'll probably pull you in. This is the vice versa. Where I as long as you have an open mind, to watch the show first and then go look for the comic book. Yep. When in uh, yep. Umbrella, read the comic book and then go for the TV show. Yeah. And to Doom Patrol's credit. The intro fucking sucks you in. Oh my god, the song is amazing. Clint Massel, who, amazing uh, from uh, Requiem for a Dream fame, has an amazing score on that. But each individual, um, I guess, tableau or you know, you got credits yep. rise. But what's going on? You get a feel for who, which which each character is and kind of how they ended up here. Just the kind of because it's like a table and they they just show who's sitting at what table. Like I, I'm not doing it justice. It's one of the greatest intros for a comic book TV show because you get so much it's amazing. in each like tiny frame of what they show. Just when like the little eyeballs roll for yep. Robot Man, I was like, oh. or Elastic Girl in the tub and her Jane hand is just all these melting. all these yep. pieces of a uh, puzzle. Yeah, like, it's amazing. Amazing. Also, the best version of Cyborg we've seen on screen. It's the definitive so... Cyborg. Of, of... <laughs> and he's a younger, like more Teen Titans ish of Cyborg three. If you're gonna cut the animated. Sure, why not? Yeah, because kind of all. Teen He's Titans great. Go is fun, but not. He comes in as bit, and it's cool how they keep mentioning or they keep referring to him as like the only superhero on the actual team he's because he's like, he gets, he gets yeah. on the just league. He like gets, yeah, you, he gets we, paid we all know who yeah. you are. If we can't go anywhere with you because everybody knows you, didn't. Essentially, it's like Cyborg leaving a professional team to go down to AAA. Yeah, and he's like so help, and he's so cocky at the, first. The, these are all bad news bears. Yeah, um, but uh, like I love it because it starts off with the dynamic of Chief who already lives with Elastigirl and uh, Negative Man. Larry, yeah. And Negative Man and Elastigirl have that dynamic. They have that connection, yeah. and that gets built on, and you see that kind of move forward. And Jane kind of comes and goes, right? Right. We learn. She doesn't really click in until Robo Man shows up. Like, yeah. they have a nice little... Um, Father-daughter, pseudo-father-daughter type yeah, they relationship. they have a nice yeah. connection that's either combative or... Uh, again, it's a, it's a completely parental... Yada yada back and forth. Um, but Robot Man is like he's the everybody's. He's the every like he's the viewers. Yeah, he's because they he's kick the protagonist, him. Because they start. He's with, the jubilee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If, so you're, talking just the, if you're, you're talking to the men, yeah. if you're talking to the nineties cartoon, you know we could start comparing DC properties to DC. Properties. I know. I was just I had, because we were doing that with he's Umbrella the, Academy. I was Robin. making a laugh. Well, yeah. we pick another one. Yeah, uh, he's the Robin. Uh, no, no, but we we get introduced into this world through him. Brendan Fraser's great in this because he was initially a race car driver, and he's like, yeah, he's a race car driver. In and this the sh- the show is different than the book. But we can get into the book a little bit later, but the sh- yeah, he he dies in a car crash while he's doing the the Formula One race, right? <laughs> because his, him and his wife keep cheating on each other. Yes, which is amazing. and so she call just, me Fox. Yeah, call me Fox. <laughs> yeah, when he's banging the young. I think it helps too that they say fuck and you get to see like a tit like the fact yeah that oh yeah this, this is completely this is, this like is yeah for a, a kind of older demographic yep and they they get you with the kind of cheesy stuff early so they can hit you with the hard stuff later because yep. hard stuff comes in later and it comes hard but they get the weird stuff in like early episodes like the farting donkey that yeah you have to get creates then, vortexes yeah, yeah, you and have portals to get in, right like well, once if you can bend your mind and then talking if you can accept that yeah if you can accept that you're you're good for the show really because it gets weird to its credit but it's good weird to its credit because yeah. you never know where it's going to turn and by that time you're already caring about the characters once you're invested in the characters and this is definitely a show that's really about character development not necessarily uh an event happening which is Umbrella Academy. They were worried about the apocalypse. Yep. And so they didn't really care about the characters. This one, you're they're caring about the characters so that when one disappears and the whole kind of reason for them joining up is to find Chief. Chief gets kidnapped or falls Chief, down. Chief disappears and they are all trying to find him. So it's what I like about this is that uh, I'm a little bit sick of the apocalypse 
plot right. and like the end of the world plot right. like we don't need it to be massive every time you can keep it smaller and make it grow a bit mm -hmm. and that's what doom patrol does whereas umbrella academy is you know apocalypse end, end of the world. doom patrol is well we've seen enough we're missing our chief where it's just like oh here's the yeah. giant blue laser is going to destroy everything yeah so yeah uh, yeah it's nothing new. We're, this one we're missing our leader and none of us are really vetted for outside yeah, we don't. but we need to go find him right and, and, so and, that's, and that's not what we even talked about with like with larry because he's Great character. <laughs> Completely burned from head to toe. He was a ace pilot and yeah. went down in flames. Yeah. Now his body's charred, so he's constantly wrapped up like a mummy, yeah. which is hilarious. Yeah, we should go through the powers. Yeah, so negative man, like you go ahead. Uh, you finish yeah. it off. No, no, go. Well, I, I gave one half of it, and then right, and then he's got he's got a uh, negative spirit. They call him the negative spirit. In lives inside him, like a second entity who they can't. He can't exist for long periods of time without the entity inside of without him. Without a body. So yeah. even the, off that top, you're like, this guy's already. Something I've never seen before. It's, it would have been easy just to make him yeah. electric or one person, but he's no. already two kind of people. Plus, he's wrapped up like a mummy. Mummy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which is awesome. Elastic Girl is a famed, like an old school famed like actress. 1940s actress. Yeah. So, yeah. Who made a deal with a, with a demon. Yep. To, to, to stay young. To forever. stay young. And what, what that means is that she's also like this blob monster. So yeah. she has to concentrate to keep herself into her human form. Otherwise, she loses shape. She just and kind of, yeah. like. Like, crushes a guy during sex she's just like <laughs> oh god she just uh what's the word i don't know like, like she just loses she just controls yeah. and yeah literally she's like ice cream yeah she just melts to the glob ice cream and robot like, man is the is cliff in the beginning who loses he dies in the in a car crash they keep his brain alive but chief keeps his brain alive and, and puts him into a robot, robot. Yeah, and what's really cool you think that's oh, that's pretty simple but what's really cool is his whole arc is like i can't feel anything mm -hmm. i can't get horny i can't get hungry i can't take a shit like there's no, i can't, well, I can't do anything walk, right? like so it's driving him the fucking first, crazy first yeah he's learning how to walk upstairs yeah right? he's like and just like oh going you back to characters it's not until he like pictures his daughter where he learn like he finds motivation yeah. to keep going forward um and then there's obviously cyborg who's half man half who's he's a cyborg mother box mother box but they get deep in into his thing. whole system and how his dad set up the um his intricate his intricate network and yeah, his grid and, and his grit there it is that's something looking for and then there's crazy jane who has 60 something personalities all in one body which would have been a power in itself which is cool but then you find out each individual character has its own power set yeah god damn which is fine so she's, ah fuck i was gonna say she's like legion but okay. <laughs> she's basically like legion but um Better. but uh well you, there's a reason for all her personalities and that's dude that's a whole episode yeah and it's great i we're gonna tell you here because we well, at times, if you don't want to hear it, skip ahead, but it's all... Well, no, skip ahead. If you're listening to this, just be prepared to be yeah. spoiled. It's childhood trauma, so her she was sexually abused as a child and by her father, so every time... At, like, age, like, let's say seven. Yeah. So, at that point, already, her brain decided, like, okay, we're going to separate you from... From... Her. Yeah, and because she was a metahuman already, it created all it these different... Manifesting. Yeah, it kept manifesting her, all these different personalities that existed. Her episode is my favorite existed. episode, because you find out... Jane Patrol, yeah, it's great how her brain works in the underground. They, yeah, it, her whole subconscious is, is called, she calls it the underground where all her different personalities actually Live, coexist yeah. and they all fight to go to the top. To go to the top to, to take control. control of her body. But then they also have this, like this um, social uh, network. network or hierarchy that like one of them is in main control of her unless right. that person starts fucking up then, then somebody they, else yeah, and other personalities understand. want nothing to do with control all of them know how to play, <laughs> cool, they all man. know how to play position and then when yeah. she checks out and she's like I'm not going up they're all like wait a minute yeah no you're there, the main there's, one there's a way to do yeah. this right so it's that, that, that alone is that's a, just, an episode. That's just yeah. her. That's just her, yeah. Uh, Curtis Armstrong, who plays Ezekiel the Cockroach, makes several appearances. And the giant and he rat. Does, he doesn't have his shining moments until like the last three episodes, the and last then, two episodes. And then Alan Tudyk. Let's who, not forget who's your, Mr. Nobody. Who's also a narrator. So I believe Timothy Dalton has some voiceover stuff, but it's more Alan Tudyk. It's more Alan Tudyk. Because the the, yeah. he breaks the fourth wall, which is amazing. And he's a man caught between dimensions. And he talks to to them so well, as yeah. they like at knowing that they are, like he's a deadpool yeah essentially. yeah yeah and breaks like, the fourth wall yeah you can't compare like, these to anything but Marvel i was just gonna properties. say he breaks yeah. the fourth wall yeah, he does. but when he even when it like the being he's like you bet you thought this was a superhero show it's like it's not he's like it's not and then he even talks to them he's like you're not a real comic book hero like, <laughs> yeah yeah like, amazing and i don't think that we're doing it justice no we're not it's Oh, man, we'll so, talk about the comic book. There's now. so much I want to... Well, they also... Okay, here's one thing I wanted... Well, one thing before we go. They actually put Dinosaur Mineral Plant... Or Animal Vegetable Mineral Man in it. <laughs> well, they put Danny the Street in there. Danny the Street's... A, like, that was one of our callbacks yeah. from Oddest Heroes Ever. When we saw it, I was like, ah! 
And I think Doom Patrol had just started, and I was like, we're going to see Danny the Street. I, I bet we'd see it in the show. Or yeah, it was a good call. Yeah, we called that. And we saw it, and I was like, goddamn. But Animal Vegetable Mineral Man. He was a, <laughs> he's, part anim, he's part dinosaur, part plant, part mineral. And who didn't make our artist Amazing. Heroes, so I don't know why who we... didn't make... Well, he's kind of an anti-hero villain, but... Well, if he's a another, foe, right? There's another list of them. He didn't make that list either. He didn't. Uh, how dare we? How, well, yeah, you. <laughs> <laughs> how dare I? But like, again, talk about the comic book. Because anyways, the, so, yeah, is this TV show to the comic uh, book? Parts of it vary. Other did, parts, not so what, much. So I read, yeah. I read Crawling from the Wreckage, which was when Grant Morrison first took over the book. It was volume two, number 19 to number 22. So it was the four issues. This reads rather quickly. But it's all good. Um, it starts at Robot Man in a psych ward. So he flashes back to his accident. In mm-hmm. this comic book, he dies from an oil slick. Right. So it's a lot more, less complicated yep. than... And he's... he's they, they save the complicated for the yeah. end. He's angry, but he's not... He's like, he's a dick, and he's angry, and he's got the same complaints. I, he has, this is the same thing. I can't mm-hmm. feel, I can't take a shit, I can't... I can't fuck. I can't fuck, yeah. Which is huge. He says that, yeah, big thing. That's a big thing. Um, and what happens is... The psych ward... <laughs> <laughs> the, the psych ward actually introduces him to Crazy Jane. This is so Grant Morrison created Crazy Jane. This is her first issue, number nineteen, and he they introduce him to her as a means to kind of maybe help him relax. Okay, like you know what? Yeah, you've got a raw deal. It could be worse. Right. And case in point, Crazy Jane. So they you, they're way more amicable in the book than they are in the show. Do you think Crazy Jane's worse off than Robot Man is? I think her origin. A little fucked up. Sure, but where they are now, who would you rather be? Crazy. The multiple personalities, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it can't get worse. Yeah. <laughs> it can't get worse. But, you know, Joshua's in this too. Right. Because remember, Joshua's in the other one. Mm-hmm. He actually has, he actually is very open with his powers in this one. Okay. Which is kind of cool. The The biggest difference was Larry's character. Because Elastigirl's dead in this. Oh. She's already dead. So she died in the last volume, or supposedly dead. Larry, uh, so would make that deal with the devil. Yeah, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Larry in this one is he's been separated from the negative spirit, who finds him again in the same psych ward that Cliff is in, mm-hmm. um, and can actually speak now. But it all there's no broken words, so it just speaks like this in a really long sentence, like okay. it goes like this, right? right? So it's hard to it's actually difficult to read, but he finds him and ends up merging Larry's body with a nurse's body named El- Eleanor Poole. Okay. So the three of them can form to make a new Good Lord, form yeah. called, they name themselves Rebus, <laughs> which sure. is like scientifically termed for the combination of things. Matter. <laughs> yeah. Different matter. Why? And they still, so they still have the, the wrap around, mm-hmm. but in this one, rather than the show where he's gay in this one, He's actually they're he oh, they're, they're actually like human? transsexual like oh, it's okay. so it's, so oh, yeah. it's a male body but very feminine with how it works and they right. want to be called Rebus sure and way more powerful it flies around shoots things okay. like yeah and in this one they call they they fight the scissor men <laughs> who are just these black silhouettes with scissor hands that's not what I was picturing but <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Garrison sure. right yep, yep. <laughs> no so these scissor men that that are interdimensional. And they're coming. They come into our world. They were created by so they accident. Cut through time, right? Dimensions. Okay. So they 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 come. They were created. They create. They were created by people by accident. Okay. They show up into our world or into the real world and cut people into their world. What? Yeah. Goddamn. It's it's weird. It's very Doom Patrol weird. But they end up beating them. But do they? Scissor Men never make any appearance in the show. It's just, Yet. So the still time. Yeah. So the the. The Cliff and Crazy Jane characters are very similar to the to the right. show, but Larry's way different. Uh, how's, Cyborg's obviously how's Chief compared from same thing. Okay, it's the same thing because he. The show only really has one big secret too, which is, and it was great. Which is Chief's an asshole. Yeah, and he set up everybody's Everybody. disaster. So that they, I don't get his motivation for that, but again, I I just enjoy the fact that he was such a dick. Yeah. And, Father figures suck apparently between these two shows because yeah. you can't trust a father. No, and and they, and Mister basically don't trust your. Well, Jane can't trust her real. You're father. You're not real father. Don't, yeah, don't yeah. Don't, don't, don't trust her fake father either. Yeah, um, yeah, rough, rough for these kids. And Mister Nobody wasn't even like a villain. A villain, villain. He was just trying to expose everybody's yeah, truth. Yeah, again, that's a, that's one of the things I enjoyed towards the end that they kind of Chief and Mister Nobody kind of reversed roles. Yeah, like Chief became the antagonist. Yeah. 
And Mr. Nobody's like, I'm kind of helping you guys. Because he plays the voice of God in the final. So, like, we were sweeping over so many great episodes. But the final I, episode. Yeah, I was going to talk about one, too. But... I, we can go back to it. I just want to talk about how. The, I can't remember the rat's name. Um, but him and Ezekiel join. And I forget what their their team is called, too. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> but they grow to, like, infinite sizes on Danny Street. Like, they call it like Danny Street, too. Like, they found a way to tie everything back up in the final two episodes. That was so satisfying. Um. But I think I still think they had characters in there that you didn't really need, like Metalo and stuff like that. There oh, Flex Metallo. I mean, he was cool. But he was cool. They they only had him for the one episode, right? But again, that's what like, one of the funniest parts in the whole show was when he flexes the wrong muscle and okay, makes yeah. everybody orgasm. Yeah, fair. And Mister Mister and Robot Man's like, uh, uh oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He starts yeah. pretending. Like, I feel it too. And they're like, yeah. "Why were you orgasming?" He's like, "Uh, just always trying to join in." No, but there's there's a lot of like Admiral Whiskers is the rat. Thank you. <laughs> Amazing, and then they have to kiss each other, and there's a lot of living. They have to be inside in order and to he's mad. For each other. He's mad. He's mad at the team because they ran so, over his it was his brother it's in so, like the first episode. They... <laughs> <laughs> and he swears allegiance yeah. to uh, Mister Nobody. Yeah. Um. Again, so I don't know how they did it, but they rode humor and kind of oh my god, just drama it. Yeah. To a great extent, because you feel for them so hard, and then you laugh. To the same extent, to the same level, and if it flips like a light switch, like there's no real time to like breathe and take in. Like Larry has a very tragic story, and then he has this whole getting to meet his lover again, and like going back. Yeah, because he's in the closet. For... Right, 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 for the whole like basically the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so they have like these heartfelt moments, and then not missing a beat, they'll flash to whoever else is going on, and it's either hilarious or something that like you really have to pay attention to. Um, and the show's so detailed, like the set oh, yeah. design, like the intricate, like just the 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 way Robot Man looks. Looks great. Um, Every move is what, 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 like when he walks around. The only thing that was kind of wonky was uh, like Cyborg's like face. Yeah. Plate that looked like it was. Yeah, it looked like it was a plate. Like, they just they just put it on his head. <laughs> it looked like, like it was part of his head. Rolling. Yeah. It looked like, like a half that, mask. That's me looking for something not to like about the show. And there's a lot of things to love about it. So. And yeah, Dan, yeah, the Dan Street episode. Where that's your favorite episode? It's just I don't know if it's, it's my favorite there. one, but it's it's up there. It's my and I don't usually like. S- we even talk about the ant farm or the fucking the the real antagonist. And stuff yeah, like that too. Yeah, but there's there's so much going on that you don't think it would fit, but because they because spend, they spent more time with the characters, then you well, the understand first episode, the connection. Yeah. yeah, first episode introduces everything weird as fuck, and it's right. like, oh wow, okay. Even Mister well, Nobody, because Mister Nobody's in like pieces. Weird as shit. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. Just, like trapped between dimensions. Yeah. So he's, you don't know. Like well, when you first see it, it's like, oh, this is what this character is gonna look like. Fine, I'll buy into it. But you don't realize, okay, no, it's just him trying to fucking work out how to walk between. Yeah, he's trying. Yeah, he's yeah. trying to survive. He's just trying to get... survive, yeah. man. It's just lips. Yeah, you're saying about Danny Street. Yeah, the Danny Street one where they just. I don't know, man. I don't really usually like filler episodes and i don't know this one is really a filler no. but where negative man gets to larry gets to kind of be himself for the first time when he's doing the karaoke with <laughs> the guy from kinky boots and stuff and i was like man i'm so happy for these yeah. guys i was like fuck yeah we didn't talk about beard tasting man what's his oh name? beard hunter beard thank hunter. you you know he's actually a um he was created as a spoof of alan Moore. good lord <laughs> yeah. so yeah there's a beard hunter character who's from the comic books who can eats beards and can track that person he tracks that person and kind of knows that person and can anticipate it's only off the beard though yeah just the beard so it's only he's hunting on dudes yeah just burly dudes essentially. yeah like it's that one hair was it from cyborg it's yeah. that one hair that came off his chin and he like but he like licks his he's like mm. Mm. he's so weird but so <laughs> hilarious like and and that's what they did that uh umbrella academy didn't do like you care just as much about the main characters as do the side characters. Yeah. Like, we're laughing at... It's like, hilarious. Uh, the, all these, like, ter- even tertiary characters that, like, are only in it for half an episode or, like, an uh, episode, but they give just enough uh, expository information to progress the overall storyline, and they have to do one little thing that either everyone thinks is completely stupid, or you need one of the specific Doom Patrols to kind of figure out how to work this into the group. Like, it's only Cyborg that can talk to Danny Street to get the whatever MacGuffin to move to the next yeah. part of the Finding Chief, right? Only one person talks to kind of Metallo, to like Metallo, right? Like, it's, like Metallo, yeah. Because they handled characters so well, they just kept 
finding ways not to squeeze them all together, but to separate them. And yeah. then when they come back together, they all have they each, learn new things. They and all bring have knowledge. New, so, yeah. Like uh, in the final episode, like Rita doesn't even use her like elastic girl. She barely she, does in the whole she, show. Fair enough. That is also true. But she has a heart to heart with like Mister Nobody, and just says like, "Hey man, like you gotta help us out here. Like, yeah. You, you gotta like." And that's the motivation that kind of turns him from bad to good, yeah. or from Mister Maker to like, "Hey, maybe I I could be part of the Doom Patrol." And, for this kind of one mission. So like, you, again, you really get behind the characters. You, you like know? them all. It's, they're all likable. So even the rat. Yeah. Even, no, I love the yeah, rat. Even Ezekiel. Ezekiel is the cockroach worse. rat combination. Yeah, yeah. They create, Oh God. <laughs> when they start and making it, they're the lovers and just like, tongue. <laughs> I didn't know cockroaches have tongues, but I clearly so, saw them just going at it. And in like, this show, a giant rat, and a giant, tall. yeah. A hundred foot cockroach and rat make, make it out. out. Because, this happens because of Mr. Nobody saying, Oh, like he, because he's the narrator, like that's part of his power set. Yeah, he's the power of persuasion too, I guess. Yeah, somewhat because yeah. he just basically says, like he's narrating the story to the cockroach. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, he was just enjoying destroying a city and finally feeling like this this massive yeah. entity. And he's like, finally, you made it, and you finally see what you really wanted. And you turn around, and there, Admiral there he whiskers. is, Admiral Whiskers. And Admiral Whiskers is like, yeah, sure, I'll go with What's that. What's up? And you start making out. It's like. <laughs> And by this point, you've already seen so many weird things that this you're, doesn't even doesn't phase like, you. You la- you're just laughing like, of course, this is the only way it could end. Yeah. And then you see a running robot man going from tongue to tongue to get from in, already being swallowed in a rat to be inside the belly of a cockroach. Sounds stupid, but makes amazing sense. <laughs> yeah, well, you because just, the, right, if the you're on, o- yeah, go the, ahead. The only way to stay alive. <laughs> through this nuclear uh, explosion that they're trying to make happen is it's being like a in a body of a cockroach. <laughs> it makes fucking perfect sense. Yeah. It, it's insane. It's just it's, how do we get inside the cockroach? It's insane how the writing worked as well as it did because nothing... Like, if you... If I read this on paper without, like, Ridiculous. pictures... Ridiculous. Think, Ridiculous. Who, who, like, who, you're selling this to who? Who's going to pick this up? Yeah. Um, great show. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going with the uh, the Grant Morrison run. Because yeah. I've only read bits and pieces of it, but I'm actually going to read. Well, I'm going to keep going with the TV oh. show. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, season, season 2 comes two. out. Yeah. Do you think, uh, like, what do you want to see any of the characters go from here? Do you think there's any spinoff possibilities for either show? Uh, well. Like I, I, like you were saying with the Umbrella Academy, I'd like to see more of the, as kids. Yeah. Like that. Give me, a, like you said, four or five episodes, just a mini series. Just like, really okay. There. How ben, the one dude died. Yeah, Ben's dead. Like, yeah. And he's only ben, acting as a ghost. Yeah. Um, they're getting a second season because they, they... Apparently it was like super highly watched. Like it was... I can see... Because when it... it I think... Well, I don't have the dates. But it dropped just randomly and kind of yeah. on, the, on the heels of superhero, superhero movies. And because Netflix is Netflix, people will binge through shit. Yep. And they'll watch like six episodes before they realize something's not good. Yeah. <laughs> but we're almost done anyway, so let's just finish let's it finish off. finish it out. And it was... The only reason I went back to finish it was like, hey man, we're doing it. For the show. So yeah. Like, yeah. I watched so, two episodes and was like, ah. I'm happy I, but I came back it, and watched it. It ended, but it didn't really end. It just kind of, like, and it's, it's cataclysmic, too. Uh, she shoots her power to the moon, and then the moon explodes, and they think they averted the apocalypse, but a giant chunk of, or giant chunks of asteroids start flying off the moon. That was kind of cool. Again, that's the but only But then it fucking ends, and I was like, oh, and then they, they all... son of a... Is that how the book ends, too? Yeah, son but they, the... they, they, they all flash out of there, but they don't take um, white violence. Because she's, oh, it she's to die. the actual protagonist. Uh-huh. Well, they they uh, kind of lobotomize her. Oh, really? Yeah. In this show, they're like, no, we got to protect her. I get it. Yeah, so do I. But uh, I was like, eh. So, I, like, here's the weird thing. It's so bad, but I've invested so much that I want to see a second season. Cause yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to watch it. I don't so. want to see a spin-off. <laughs> so I'll like, let you. Unless it's... Like, a miniseries, unless it's, like unless four it's, episodes? Unless it's Pogo. Like, yeah, I'm Origin of Pogo. But I don't care about the robot mom. Nah. I definitely don't care about... The, Any the, the kids either. The, well, I kind of care about the kids. Yeah. Well, not really. No, not really. Nah. <laughs> I care about the kids. I just don't care about the adults. Okay, for the kid versions of yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. I want to see how the, I where the, the kids, kids really went wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll watch it. I can't wait for Doom Patrol. That's it. I can't yeah. wait for a second. If I'll be watching that if week to week. If we're doing the juxtaposition, Doom Patrol, we're counting the days, right? I'm going back and watching old episodes. Oh, yeah. You pick up more things and little details and stuff. I got the fucking theme song on loop. Yeah, he's a nerd. I do. I, I like as soon as the show is done, I was like, I'm gonna miss that song. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. So uh, again, but uh, the reason I love Doom Patrol is the reason I love the intro. 
Yeah. But you're saying it worked for not having an intro for Umbrella Academy. I think it was to his detriment. Because you could have given Maybe. him so much yeah. kind of backstory yeah. or exposition in a little... I liked... I, I enjoyed how they used the logo ra- in random situations. So that's right. kind of cool. I don't... I think that it was a bad choice not to have its, their own theme song for sure. But the way they introduced okay. it was kind of cool. Intro, yeah, but you could intro with a song and then lead into the scene. And then boom, they're, you know, on the bookshelf. Or boom, on... That's an intro, folk. All they put is Umbrella Academy. They just go straight into... Yeah. The plot? Nobody cares. This segment's called Heroes from a Hat, where we take two heroes from this hat. This one right here. And put them against, <laughs> put them against each other. In... It's not our first time doing it. So no, I know. So you're surprised about this hat that you're pulling against you, from. Yeah, you're just like this one right here. It yeah. got me. You're, uh, you're listening. It got me. This is round three. We're doing sports. One-on-one sports. Combat sports. Combat sports, like this one, the Home Run Derby. There's a lot of combat yeah, in that. Yeah, this is the home run. <laughs> this derby. is more combat. This is for the realm of Earth. And we gotta take out two of our we should have, final eight. We should have done a Mortal Kombat round. It's basically the first round. The final round. Or the end the final <laughs> round. Yeah, the final round is gonna be intense. Final final round is called Mortal Kombat. First round is combat. So this is the this winner. Is Mortal Kombat. The winner of this goes on to the semifinals. Which is more Oops. Mortal Kombat. All right, no looking, no looking. No, no looking. looking. I got pull, pulling from this Silver hat. Surfer. And I have Sentry. Boy. Time to sock some oh dingies. Oh, boy. Okay, first of all, are we in a home or are we in a... Sorry, are we in a field or in a dome? <laughs> I thought it was like... A home field. Um, am I home team or your away team? <laughs> Same fucking thing. <laughs> well, which one is it, Coke? I am home team. Are we wearing our jerseys or like... No, we're in the same, same jerseys. The official? Well, you don't wear clothes. And no. I, and I... You, you have, wear a yellow I have, jumpsuit. I look badass. Eh. So what, am I Milwaukee Brewers then? Based eh. on my colors? And you would be... What's all silver? Uh, Is anybody else silver? The Mets? No. <laughs> no. The Sox? Sox? They're the closest. Black and white. I would say you're the Yanks. So we go for distance or just amount? Do you know what a home run derby is? Yeah, but I, is the rules <laughs> the same here? It's getting it over the wall. Damn. The more you get just over the wall that. in the time remaining. Yeah. Do you think do you so think amount. Silver Server can lock them farther than Century? Yeah. That's not true at all. Yeah. No. Because you know I'm breaking out the surfboard. Sure. I'm a fucking Superman. Yeah, and I'm hitting like multiple balls at once. Pow! Well, who's pitching to you? Cosmic power. You know, Century doesn't have cosmic powers. He literally does. He's no, from, he's not. He's Lit- from the cosmos. I am the cosmos. Nah. Galactus is more the cosmos than you. Galactus is a bitch. Well, he's not socking some dinghies, so... Fuck your dinghies. Fuck Galactus. And fuck Sentry. BAM! That's Silver Server knocking out of the park. You, they can't see my, my face of just disappointment and how this is panned out. Yeah, I channel the power cosmic, man. What do I have to do with so- socking dinghies? Who's my pitcher? Do I get to choose my pitcher? No. Am I um, se- uh, Sentry or am I uh, his alter ego? No, you're Sentry. Damn, because I think the alter ego is true. <laughs> you're, just, you're just a crazy man, man. Um, do I have to wear a hat? No. Damn, you should have said yes. Is that, I'm gonna get the hair in my eyes. I'm That's amazing. You're gonna get hairs in your eyes. I'm not wearing a hat. You're not gonna wear a hat either. You don't even have hair. Yeah. Advantage me. Do you even know how to use a bat? You're not even wearing regulation cleats. I'm using my. <laughs> okay, you're getting way too into this. Hey, right, well, you sock some dingies. Just hit the fucking ball. Well, clearly. I feel like you'd be distracted though. You know, like Sentry does well, the, like the far away. Well, that was personality. I, I think like, I would have more I, strikes yeah, than you. Yeah, I, feel like, I feel like you'd be zoned you'd be in. Off you're like, the type of baseball uh, player that like doesn't think about anything. It's no. like, oh, I'm just focus. I'm gonna hit, hit, hit. Yeah. And I'm the one that's like, oh, dude, like yeah. there's a hot girl over you'd there. You'd be like, ah. Uh, uh, but I'll hit more. Cause I'm more of a superhero than you. No, you'll miss more. No, no. no. I'll hit them further. No, no, no. Cause I'll channel. I'll get that perfect strike down. Get into the rhythm. So literally Crack we have to do a part. rock, paper, scissors because I'm pretty sure they're easily... There's not, How do we prove who's going to hit more home runs? 
uh, easily by what we're doing right now. Well, you're with not even. Sur with the surfer. You, so I get to use. Nor in rad. So I get to use any object because you're just like I'm using. The surfboard a is surfboard. part of me. Sure, but it's not a bat. So I'm using a tree. No, it's not part of you. It's not your thing. Sentry doesn't fly around with a tree at all times. Was, was the last time I read a Sentry comic? I am Did he Groot. have a tree? Does he have a tree? I am Groot. <laughs> so he's gonna end up with Groot. I am Groot. <laughs> he's the new Guardian of the Galaxy. Actually, Silver Surfer is actually the new Guardian yeah. of the Galaxy. So he does. So he's using Groot? Yeah. And this. Don't steal my joke. I'm using Groot. Fuck who's you. using the surfboard. Fuck you, Ra Rocket's dead. <laughs> Spoilers. He'll be back. Give him like three months. No, but I, I I just feel like Sentry would be so like distracted by. Oh yeah, his you own feel that the yeah. person that you didn't choose is yeah. gonna win the event? I I agree. Oh, yeah. What? I'm not Thank agreeing you for to agreeing that. With me. Yes. I'm really not. You just did. Listen, first of all, I look like a baseball player. You look like a, a tinfoil meth an, al an alien. <laughs> you you look like a mascot. <laughs> So, so I so it's even worse for you when you lose. No, 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 I'm getting the contract to come play Major League Baseball. You're getting a deportation letter because everyone thinks you're a illegal alien, which you kind of are. So you're getting ice on you. But I'm in this derby. I'm channeling the power of cosmic. You can't like. You can't channel a, a stronger power than that. What are you talking about? Sentry can't channel the power you don't, of you the don't cosmos. Say this with a straight, you're not even taking this seriously. Very Look, seriously. I've, I've even printed out Fantasy League stats to show you what my on-base percentage would be oh if boy. I was Sentry. <laughs> you gotta do the <laughs> analytics. It's about the analytics. No, it's... Let me choke. It's about the analytics. Little, I, little I choke feel. I definitely have more RBIs than you have. Okay. This is out of control. It is. So I win? No, you lose. Silver Surfer goes on. Nobody cares. <laughs>